Hello everyone, I'm David, a PhD student at the University of Edinburgh, and I'm glad to be here today presenting you our first Joomla package, Bonds.jl. But what is Bonds? What does it do? How does it work? I think these questions are better answered through an example. So let's consider this hypothetical biological system that represents the transcription and translation of a protein that can also repress its own transcription only in the presence of an external enriched. With this, we can formulate or find in literature a mathematical model of the sorts, and it's at this point where BOMS comes to save the day. The first thing to know about BOMS is that it heavily relies on dictionaries, and the user is not left with the task to fill the, those dictionaries with information about a specific functionality of the package. This function here, info hope, will give you all what you need to know in these cases. But let's start with an with example. First thing we need to do is to generate our model scripts to start working with. First thing we need to do is to generate this empty dictionary, calling this function, and fill it with information about our mathematical model. In here, we introduce our model in the form of a string, and for the sake of simplicity, that you'll see later on why, I've just fixed some of the model parameters. But the next thing to do would be to generate our script, calling this function here generate model. If we make any mistake in this section or in any other section of the package, POMS has a series of checks that will point you to the most likely mistake. But if everything is fine, you call your function generate model and you get a script something like this, containing your uh, model function and some helping functions that help to reiterative simulations or simulate models with time varying inputs. Now, from this point, we can start simulating our model. How do we do it? With POMS, well, first we generate our empty dictionary, we fill it with information about the experiment or experiments that we want to simulate, and we call the function simulate of this. As simple as this, we get our results and some summary plots if we want. POMS also help to, to generate pseudo data in the exact same way as before, but also specifying what states of the model are observables and the type of noise that you want to introduce. And in this case, we call the function gen cell that, and we get our pseudo data results. Here, BOMS also generates a series of CSV files that are going to come quite handy later on, you'll see. But yeah, we get our cellular results and some summary plots if we want. The next thing that BOMS does for you is it helps estimating mo the model parameters. The easiest and quick quickest way to do it would be through maximum likelihood estimation, which I'm not going to go through much, you just fill in the dictionary and get in your parameter best estimate, as we can see here. But what we've spent a lot of time at is to make by using inference of uh, model parameters as simple as possible through bounds. In this case, we can do it using stan. So first, we will need to generate our empty dictionary, fill it with the different information that it's needed. In this case, here we see why those previous CSV files can become handy, because we don't need to introduce all the experimental data and details manually. We can just point to the CSV files, and bounds is going to extract that information for you. You can also change some of the stand settings, and the critical point here will be the definition of the package. The uh, bombs can do it in different ways. Uh, the first thing, and easiest thing, way to do it will be defining um, parameter bounds. In which case, bounds is going to assume to get the normal distributions expanding only to standard deviations. You can also introduce parameter samples, in which case BOMS is going to try to fit the best probability density function to be used as a priors, or you can introduce a series of strings. Um, specifying your prior as you would do in stand. Then you would call this function here, stand infer, which generates your stand script for you and stand model. So you don't need to learn stand to run these inferences and it's gonna run the inference for you, getting your posterior sam sample posterior results. Uh, from now on, I'm just gonna stick with this kind of plotting uh, for the sake of comparison, in which we can see that three of the parameters got well identified and these came into uh, um, BOMS also uses inference using Turing.jl. Turing.jl is not going to run within BOMS. What BOMS does is generate all the data structures and scripts for you. So, as with the previous section, we generate our empty dictionary, we fill it with all the information that it's required, we call the function Turing.infer, and that is going to generate your script containing your Turing model. It also will print a message telling you what to do next. First, you're going to need to include that script in your path create your Turing model, and run your inference. As we can see here, getting similar results as we had with Stan. The last thing that BOMS does for you is to optimally design experiments uh, pointed at the problems of model selection and model inference. So getting maximally informative experiments for these two tasks. In this case, for model selection, we're going to need a competing model. 
for the sake of simplicity, we're going to be using the exact same model. We're just changing some of the fixed parameters, but this can be a different model structure. And what the optimization does is try to find the experiment that maxim dri maximally drives apart the predictions of two models. To do this, POMS can do it through maxim max maximizing the budgetary distance in the presence of multiple parameter samples or maximizing the Euclidean distance in the presence of a single parameter sample. So now we create our empty dictionary. We fill it with information about the different experimental constraints. We call this function here in order to generate all the necessary scripts for the optimization. This does not run the optimization. What runs the optimization is this function here, main OIDMS, which is going to run it through using Bayesian optimization.jl. Now, once we run this, we get our optimal experimental design. As we can see here, we probably could do better at different model parameters since our model is still quite certain in some predictions. It's for this reason that we've included optimal experimental design for model inference. This is a sampling-based approach, so the first thing we're going to need to do is to sample our parameter prior. At this point, for the sake of comparison, let's forget about our previous inference and our previous pseudo data. We're going to just start from scratch. And what this optimization does is try to find the experiment that maximizes the prediction uncertainty of your model to exploit this direct relationship relationship between your uh, prediction uncertainty and your parameter uncertainty. How do we assess this? Well, either through the distance between prediction, uh, the percentiles of your predictions or by using entropy. But as with all the other sections, we first generate our empty dictionary. We fill up the information about the different experimental constraints. We generate our our scripts to run the optimization, which will run again with using Bayesian optimization.gl, and we call our main OITMC function to run the optimization and get our results with our uh, experiment that has a maximum prediction acceptance. At this point, we can generate our real data or cell data and perform our Bayesian inference. As easy as this, we get the results, which are similar to the ones we obtained before, but considering that here we're using only one experiment instead of two, as we did in the previous sections. So for the sake of comparison, let's design our second optimal experiment using those posterior results. We get something of the sort uh, with maximum prediction uncertainty. Now we generate our data or pseudo data. We perform our inference using as prior our last posterior, this is important, and then we run our inference getting the results in which all the four parameters got well identified, showing that POMS not only uses work with mathematical models, but it uses um, a Bayesian inference of model parameters and reduces experimental work through optimal experimental design. Thank you very much.